I'm going to kick off today's session um, and just remember or remind us rather why we are joining through this very special inaugural or pilot version of a maternal and child health uh, MLP learning collaborative. Um, so first and foremost, just for the integrity of our uh, recording here, uh, I am Bethany Hamilton, co-director of the National Center for Medical Legal Partnership. Uh, if you're tuned in today, you're tuned in to session four of our 2022 learning collaborative on using legal services as a part of a community strategy to improve maternal and child health. It's April 14, 2022. This uh, learning collaborative is uh, funded by and supported by the Health Resources and Services Administration. <clears throat> and we've been partnering with uh, several of the faculty members. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, including Otta Fennick from Yale School of Medicine, Vicki Gerard from Georgetown University Health Justice Alliance, Laurel Patchen from MedStar Washington Hospital Center, uh, Roxana Richardson from Georgetown University Health Justice Alliance, and Alice Rosenthal from the Center for Children's Advocacy. You all have heard us um, very uh, casually refer to them as the DC teams or the Connecticut teams. And so we wanna sincerely thank them for stepping away from their practices, their day-to-day -day practices with patients and clients for um, facilitating these very important discussions about how you can implement your MLPs to address maternal and child health. So why did we decide to take this on? Um, it's not that you all haven't been addressing maternal and child health. It is because we agree with all of our policymakers around us that enough is enough. We are in the United States. We have one of the worst maternal mortality rates in the world. We are in the United States and we are still finding that children are not getting food that they need to eat, to do well in school, to be healthy, to thrive. And one day also, one day also be those moms and dads, right? To continue humanity. We are here because we know that those social determinants of health can be addressed. And one evidence-based solution and intervention is bringing legal services integrated to healthcare as you would any other specialist in the healthcare field to address those legal needs of patients, those health harming legal needs, those barriers that prevent us from realizing health equity around the United States. We have many, many stories that we can tell about the needs and the impact of medical legal partnerships and Coincidentally, we just so happen to have playing out today a story that I don't have to tell you, but I want to tee up um, Dr. Ada Fennick, and we're going to move to the next slide so she can tell you about a text message she, she just received today that I really think gets across the point about why we're doing this learning collaborative, why we're putting our brains together to do something more because enough is enough. Ada, all yours. Thank you. So, you know, this is kind of one of the, we talked a lot about the three part stool and this is the part where it's advocacy. And I am so proud because the people that you see here, a bunch of them are our residents and fellows um, who made the trip up to Hartford to be at a rally on Husky for Immigrants. Husky is our health insurance for, um, for kids and youth. Um, and so, uh, so it's our, our, our trip program, but the idea is last year, uh, the Connecticut General Assembly allowed kids under eight to get Husky. Um, and the rally is for kids up to 18 to go ahead and get Husky. Um, and so this is one of my current residents who's just in, an incredible person overall. He's a second year pediatric resident. He made the trip up there on, on a day when otherwise he would be free because you know if he was in the ICU, I'm telling you, he couldn't make this trip. So he took his free time. He traveled up to Hartford, which is an hour trip from where we are. And he said on mic, I treated a 10 year old boy who'd been seen in the ER five times this year. I asked the family what medications he takes at home when he has difficulty breathing. His mother bowed her head and said, we don't have medications, we don't have insurance. And so a shout out to Nish Pandya, one of our stellar docs. And advocates, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. This is why we are here. We're also doing this in the form of a learning collaborative, right? Because we know, I just wanted to stay on that picture for a moment, that we have to network. We have to do this together. This is an extremely heavy lift, right? 
we cannot keep working even in silos as MLP programs and think that that's going to get something done. We have to start sharing what we know about what works well. We have to start collecting as groups, as networks to also advocate, do that legal advocacy, do the healthcare advocacy and really continue to raise awareness in the right places at the right times to answer that call to action in a way that is continuing to take a real, I think, move uh, a stab at the problem here, and that's health inequity. So we are also answering your call as participants. We looked at the evaluation data that came in and we realized that number one, you all want more time to be able to do that networking within this learning collaborative. That was also a goal of this learning collaborative is to create the networking opportunities. That's why we kicked off that first session with helping you all get to know each other and that way we hope that that set the uh, stage and the pace and the habit of being able to continue to um, commiserate, uh, share during the breakouts and that you will continue to do so after this learning uh, collaborative wraps up and hopefully cross fingers, we'll be able to tell you about what we have coming up um, in a few months. So let's move to the next slide. Uh, we answered the call to action, right? You asked us for more time and you asked us to uh, give you the space to be able to discuss the things that are, are of most interest to you. So we have uh, worked with the faculty members to um, ascertain in advance what they felt most comfortable leading discussions on. And uh, for participants, you'll be able to self-select. Today, you're gonna self-select which rooms you want to go into. Some people did indicate in advance where they wanna go, but we'll give you instructions in a moment about how to self-select. We are at the end of this four-part learning collaborative. I just want to pop something up on the screen so we have it as a visual since we are recording this. And, and very quickly note right there. Um, this is a part of the many calls to action, especially from the White House. Um, we heard the call to action in many speeches, but I just wanted to pull out a direct, a direct quote from the White House. Quality, equitable healthcare is a right, not a privilege. We are talking about the data. We're talking about what we know and you all also know how to address it, how to get something done for a population that has experienced too many disparities. And so I want to sincerely thank you all, the MLPs for always answering that call to action. You've always collaborated. You've always taken the intervention to the people. You continue to do the advocacy and you are producing the research so that we can continue the cycle of MLP in advancement. And NCMLP is gonna help uh, continue to build on the momentum. So look out for announcements about the next iteration, as I mentioned about this learning collaborative. Make sure, please, you are in our NCMLP MLP database. All you've got to do is shoot any of us on the NCMLP team and email, let us know you have a new or developing MLP so we can follow up and gather at least your contact information because it's the power of the field that helps to drive MLP advancement. We don't know who you are. There's no way we can help you connect with your colleagues to be able to uh, get done what you do so well. And that's helping clients and patients uh, realize their full health. And we need your stories. We're here to disseminate the stories, updates you have, the research that you have. Remember as a national org, we can help disseminate your stories, your uh, research uh, at the national level. We're here to help. So share those with us. And, and especially for me, I would love to work with you all to help leverage those additional opportunities to create that systemic change and raise additional awareness about the role that you play as MLPs to uh, change lives, save lives and change lives for the better. So I wanna thank all of our faculty members, Dr. Otto Fennick, Alice Rosenthal, Vicki Gerard, Dr. Laurel Patchen, Lisa Kessler, we've got attorney Roxana Richardson, and I know there's other Georgetown folks as well in the participant group, <laughs> and, I, and I lost like Caitlin and stuff. So I wanna sincerely thank the faculty as well as all of you participants for joining in this learning collaborative with us together. We'll be back, look out for announcements in a few months about when and how you can sign up. Please keep doing the great work that you do, cause that good trouble. We'll see you all again next year. Thanks you all.